Okay, in this video I'd like to introduce the method of Frobenius. This is an extension of the power series solution method to solving differential equations. And if you remember in the past when we solved differential equations, we used a power series that looked like this. a n times x to the n. And method, the method of Frobenius is more general. It involves another term up here. Now, of course, the term is, uh, the term is I would say, a constant of some, of some form, or maybe even a function, but it's not a function of x anyway, that's for sure. All right, that's, that's the first thing to say. And uh, these are slightly more difficult, but not much more difficult. Because if you remember, in the past, when we solved differential equations, say if we had y, y double prime minus y is equal to 0, we got something like... Um, We'll say for the y double prime, you might have had n is equal to 0 to infinity of a n times a couple of things. And then for that, might be y double prime. And you might have y prime, say x to the n. And you might have y prime is equal to something similar, a n, blah, 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 x to the n. And this might actually be minus 2 like that. And what we did was, we said that in order for us to solve the equation, we had to have both of these power series beginning at the same point, but having also the same power on their variable. So what we did was, we wrote out the first two terms in the y double, double prime, and then we used just, the, just the, the, the series that was left. So for example, we had, well, for n is equal to 0, we were going to get 0, n is equal to 1, we got 1, and then we had plus, and then we had n is equal to 2, time, up to infinity of a n times blah 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 x3 n minus 2. Like that, and then what we said was, well, what we do, what we're going to do is shift all the terms in this, so they'd be able to meet this. And when we shifted all the terms here upwards, we shifted this one downwards, and what we were left with was something along the lines of x to the n, something along those lines. And now we started at the same point here and here, and also had the same power on x. And the method of Frobenius is no different. However, what's more dif difficult about this is that in, in the method of Frobenius, of course, we're going to have this R term. All right? And we might have R squareds. We might have, uh, we might have um, just normal constants. We might have R cubes and that sort of thing. And basically what we need to do is solve a thing called the indicial equation. Okay? And what that means is we need to get a value for R. Okay, so we're going to do everything the exact same as we did for solving the power series. And we're going to get down, if you remember in the power series, we got the whole way down to something along the lines of x to the n times, and we might have a n plus 2, blah, 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 a n, blah, 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 is equal to 0. And we got our recurrence relation from here. Now this time, we're also going to have things like r, r squared, all that sort of thing inside there. And before we can actually get our recurrence relation, we will have to find out what the value for r is. And I'll show you how to do that uh, during an example. There's no point really in doing it now. Okay, so look, that's what the, the method of Frobenius is and how it's different to uh, the part. Well, it's how it's, um, it's similar to, but yet different, the normal method for using power series to solve differential equations. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.